many of you are educators who are currently um, involved in teaching, so teaching students? Okay, great, thanks. Uh, how many of you are, are, are not, not doing that? <laughs> great, thanks. Um, so, very good afternoon. My name is uh, Juliana Ang, and I'm from LCCL Coding Academy. Right, so uh, my topic for today is um, um, growth in a coding classroom. So firstly, um, I'd like to thank actually all of you for being here. Uh, it's a Thursday after all, and I'm sure that um, all of you have other things to attend to, but other, instead of doing that, you are here uh, and, and I'm learning for you. So I'm grateful for that, and I hope that uh, what I share here will be useful um, and uh, informative. So. Um, something quick about me. Um, firstly, I, you know, this is uh, me and my husband here just last Sunday, just this Sunday actually in Innsbruck. So um, not only, um, I, I, I mean, so firstly, who am I? I I'm probably jet lagged. All right, so, so please um, pardon me if I appear quite incoherent or, or need some time to uh, uh, string up my words. All right. So thank you for that. Um, I was a student here at uh, SOC, and my probably my first um, first um, informal foray into into teaching was um, creating teaching instructional documentations uh, for a company that I was interning with okay, at that time. So um, and then thereafter, I was uh, uh, working as an undergraduate tutor, uh, and then shortly after that, I graduated uh, into the industry. Uh, took me a few years into, into the industry, um, having some experience in, in uh, software engineering uh, as well as uh, pre-sales, writing some IT proposals. Uh, took me a few times of that to realize that instead of writing IT proposals, I would rather be writing proposals for education uh, in IT. Right, so I quit my job and then ever since I've been teaching full-time. Okay. So, I like to think of myself as a teacher, but also a student, uh, because as I teach, uh, I also learn. All right. So, uh, what what do I do at, at LCCL? All right. Um, so, I teach students from five and above, um, five up until right now. We have a couple of adult students, and I'm teaching that too. So, here is a classroom actually from yesterday, um, pre preschoolers, and this is um, uh, at at our place uh, with older kids. And this is with uh, slightly older, more older kids. All right. So I've been teaching since 2012. Uh, and at that time, I took time off from work you know, to run a holiday boot camp. So um, I didn't get exposed to computer science or coding until I was in university. So at that time, when I finally managed to get exposed, I realized that, hey, actually, I like this very much. Um, why didn't I know about this when I was younger? Right? And because if I had known about it younger, when I was much younger, it, it would have been pretty easy for me to decide on, uh, on a course of study for tertiary education. So that motivation spurred me to run boot camps for younger kids. Um, at that time, yeah, uh, at that time I was running it, um, uh, running boot camps called um, game programming uh, boot camp. Right, so basically, kids come in, they create uh, games, they have fun uh, while they learn to code. So after all these years of learning, uh, I mean, after some time of, of teaching and as well as learning while teaching, um, I asked myself a question. Right, so how do we define a successful coding and computational thinking uh, education? Well, back in 2012, uh, my, my plan was this. Okay? Uh, hey, teach them Scratch, you learn Scratch, uh, you code a game, you have fun with it, you like it, then you want to learn more and code more. And then, then you get more motivated to do more. Right? Then, after a few times of doing that, I was thinking about how can we expand this further. Right? And right now, my current model is like this. Okay? First, teach them to code, the fundamentals of coding, and then let them apply their coding not only to virtual objects, uh, for example, like Scratch, uh, but also to the physical world by making uh, uh, through robotics, etc. And then thereafter, proceed to text-based coding like Python, solve several more near real-world problems, and then after that, applying that um, to something that is more um, tangible for the community or, or people around them. Okay. 
So by code over here, I do mean coding fundamentals, uh, robotics, digital making, and et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. Um, and then after doing that for a while, um, we, we start to ask ourselves, yeah, is, is this enough? Okay, and what are we really doing here when we say, hey, code, and then uh, make, and, and solve problems, and then applying them? Well, well firstly, before, before I answer this question, we have to, I realized that I had to ask myself, what, you know, what theory am I um, basing my question on? Right, I have a mentor that, um, that taught me this, that uh, firstly, uh, before we even start with a method, we start with the theory, and then the theory drives the method. And once we have the method, we can develop matrix to uh, see whether we are successful in, in implementing uh, our, our methods. All right. So the, the theory that I finally realized uh, after teaching for a while is this. Okay. But Prof. Leong has uh, Prof. Ben Leong actually spot the surprise. Okay. So firstly, um, the theory was that uh, hey, education is a transfer of information, um, but no, it's not. Right, I realized that um, education is actually a process of, uh, of transformation, n not a transfer of, of information. So based on this model, uh, what then does that mean for uh, education in coding and computational thinking? Well, if we go with a theory where education is a trans uh, transfer of information, then likely our likely teachers or students would drive themselves by asking uh, this question, how much do I know, right, as a student or, and, or as, a as a teacher, you may ask, hey, how much do you know? Um, and, and then with this kind of method, then uh, we would, with this kind of theory in mind, then we would start to be more skill focused. Um, we are looking at the quantity of the skill, you know, how much uh, uh, impressions of achievements in that skill. Uh, we, look, we focus on the result. Um, and then we judge that result, and we are pushing in information into the student. Right? This, is how, uh, this is how much you can learn this, that, 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 that. Whereas when we look at education as a, a process of transformation, then we are asking a different kind of question. Okay? And the question is, how much, question as a teacher is, how much are you open uh, to learning and growing in your uh, coding education or your computational thinking education. And then with that kind of question, then we would be focusing on a different kind of implementation. Right? Then we'll be looking at, um, uh, we'll be more mindset focused. We are looking at the student's uh, quality of, of, of work rather than quantity. Um, we'll, we will be more focused on the process. We'll be more trusting of their abilities to learn. Uh, and instead of pushing in information, the education, the process of the education will be more focused on drawing out the strengths of the individual to the subject that they are learning. Right. So again, how do we define a successful coding and computational thinking education? Um, what I mentioned so far, you know, the, um, the flow with code, make and etc. That was a skill set. And so over here, I'd like to propose that uh, other than skill set, the mindset must also be in involved. So a successful uh, coding and education, uh, a successful coding education and computational thinking education would have to include expansion of the mindset as well. So what then is a framework that we can use uh, for mindset? All right. Um, now over here, I am just as much a learner uh, as you are. All right, so I start this, um, uh, start to implement this um, by looking at, by referring to this book, uh, Mindset by Carol Dweck. How many of you have seen this book? Or at least have heard of it? Yeah, I think a few have. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, how many of you have read it? Great, thank you so much. Um, so feel free to add in, right, uh, uh, as, you, as you see the following slides. So according to Carol Dweck, okay, um, um, well, when it comes to mindset, it in involves not only the student transformation, but also the teacher's transformation. All right? So the teacher's mindset will subsequently influence the teacher's attitudes, the teacher's communication, and then that would influence the student's uh, attitudes and their learning process. So, so it is a transformation of both teacher and student's uh, fixed mindset into a growth mindset. 
All right. So according to Carol Dweck, uh, a fixed mindset means this. It, it means that uh, it is a mindset that is based on uh, a belief uh, that traits like intelligence, your skill, and etc. are fixed. So um, everyone has a particular capacity for intelligence, and then once you've reached that, you're fixed. Uh, so um, and 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 from that kind of mindset. Um, if I can give more evidence of myself being more intelligent, then the better it is. All right? It fits, it fits uh, my uh, self-confidence. So with that mindset, we call this the knower. Versus the growth mindset, which is based on the belief that um, qualities are ever expandable with more, uh, more practice and more development right? and more effort. So with this mindset, the person is known as the learner. So here are some cases uh, in my coding classroom uh, as we run classes for, for, for kids and teens. Right? So sometimes a note, so, you know, as I give these cases, um, the intention is to, is to, um, is to identify right, the ideas that uh, Dr. Carol Dweck has developed into uh, uh, the classroom and specifically in a classroom that teaches coding. Right? Um, and I don't think that, well, in my opinion, um, st students' mindsets are influenced, right? And, and they can always be changed. So sometimes when they come in and then uh, they, they come in and when they work on a project and, and so on and so forth, then they say, hey, uh, I don't know this. I think it's very um, natural and common for some young kids to say, I don't know, and, and that is fine, all right? But the, um, my, my point is that uh, when they say I don't know, there could be some feelings uh, or some um, thoughts behind. And if it is an I don't know with, uh, with, with the kind of thought where, hey, I do not know, I'm going to give up, or I don't know, I don't want to do anything further, then in that case, we are, we are looking at a little knower over here. Right? So a little knower that is in front of a teacher, what we want to do is say we want to help the, the knower learn to become a learner, which would, would, would use languages uh, like, I don't know yet, but I'm ready to find out. Right. Here's another case. So sometimes, uh, and some of you in, who are teaching may, uh, may have such an example too, um, they already know something. The student already knows something, uh, and they and they are very proud to show it over and over. And that is great, you know. Uh, it's, it's great as a teacher to see that hey, uh, your students are doing this uh, over and over. Uh, but then suddenly we start to see that, hey, this student is is not uh, so open to discovering uh, something else, right? And then we realize hey, that that is a knower. So the the opposite of that, the learner would be more open to taking risk. Right, more open to learning new methods of, of doing things, even though they have already they already know that these things can be done in this way. Right, so that's another case. Now another case is um, uh, actually comes from one of our uh, uh, the junior teacher in the past. Uh, so we noticed that this teacher keeps saying <coughs> to uh, this girl, who is uh, pretty uh, naturally gifted in, in coding, say, "Wow, you're good. You're good." Right. Uh, and, you know, um, the, 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 again, the thing is that it's again a transformation of teacher and student. And when the teacher communicates in such a way to the student, then we feel that it runs a risk of, um, um, of setting them into a fixed mindset. Right? So instead of you're good, um, then another way to go about praising the person uh, or the little coders is, hey, actually, you're learning. That's great. Congratulations for learning, right? So instead of I'm good, I learn. <coughs> um, here's another case. Um, the NOAA student uh, would ignore the feedback. So um, it has happened before. Um, they come and they already know. And uh, I mean, they, they've already learned a few things. They know it. And they keep using the same methods, right? So instead of that, um, a learner would be more open to uh, learning from the feedback. Uh, another language of a knower is that you'll see a knower say, hey, I'm not as good as this, uh, my, my, my classmate, right? Versus a learner will say, hey, I haven't learned this yet. Okay, okay, my classmate has learned it, I haven't learned this yet. Okay. So there are um, a lot of examples of this um, 
may not be from a coding classroom uh, in Carol Dweck's book. Um, here is a diagram that is um, that can be found on the internet, really. Um, so over here, if you see, uh, it says uh, fixed mindset, intelligence is static, uh, whereas gr uh, growth mindset, intelligence uh, can be developed, right? And the fixed mindset would lead to um, <coughs> a desire to look smart and therefore a tendency to um, correspond to the following, to challenges, obstacles, uh, effort, criticism, etc., etc. Whereas a growth mindset would lead to a desire to learn and therefore a tendency to embrace challenges versus avoid challenges, um, would lead to a tendency to persist in the face of setbacks instead of giving up easily when, uh, when, uh, when, when met with obstacles. Um, and they would see effort as a path to mastery versus a fixed mindset who would see effort as uh, something that is, that is, that is bad. Right. Okay. So again, how do we define uh, successful coding and computational thinking uh, education? So skill set plus mindset. Uh, but then after looking at this a bit, I'd like to expand it a bit further. So I'd like to change it to skill set plus learning mindset. Right. Um, but not only that, how about CT mindset, uh, what Prof. Leong has been talking about. Right? So uh, computational thinking uh, will not say a lot, pretty much uh, the same as what Prof. Leong has shared earlier. Um, uh, one case from a classroom is actually a very recent one, uh, where students, after they learned a few things and they, uh, they were going for a competition, so hey, suddenly they need to, um, instead of solving classroom problems, right? suddenly they are given a problem to solve and then they have to, they have to come up with, hey, what do I need to do with the hardware? Um, which is to create this, this particular robot. Uh, what do I need to do with the software? How would I, uh, how would I code it in a way that's modular, etc., cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So again, we have skill set plus learning mindset plus CT mindset. And then again, um, after a while, we see that we can expand it a bit further. All right, um, which is how about a beauty mindset? So from a, a learner with zero knowledge, having some knowledge, um, having knowledge to learn on their own, and then having a knowledge to explore things computational thinking-wise, now having an appreciation for elegance in the solution. So from zero to coding, to learning on your own, to appreciating beauty. Um, this is an example from a class uh, in Python. So um, the, the student is already actually pretty proficient in Python, right? But not yet at the stage where um, uh, where the student could appreciate beauty. And so on the, on the left over here, you see the, the code that is written is, um, even if you can't read or don't know the context, you can see it's pretty repetitive, right? In fact, it's actually a, a scissors, a scissors, paper, stone game. Uh, then if the person would have a little appreci uh, more appreciation for beauty, and then Depending on the language, I mean, on Python, you can do something more Pythonic. You can, do, you can, you can use an idiomatic Python. Or um, even as a general case, you can always uh, write better algorithms with this. So again, from zero to someone who appreciates uh, beauty in, 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 the, in the solution. So this is uh, what I propose to um, as a framework to look at growth in a coding <coughs> and computational thinking classroom. Um, but definitely it's open for expansion and improvement. All right. And I'm continuously learning as well. And there are many educators here. Uh, if you have some ideas, let's have a conversation. And, and then together we can improve um, the quality of of learning, of teaching in a classroom uh, when it comes to coding and computational thinking. So thank you very much. Um, you can reach me here. Okay, so thank you.